Not only are we in a situation where you can build a minimum viable product faster than ever, we're also in a situation where there are more ideas that can be created because AI now allows tools and solutions that were never possible before. Think of all the apps that you use day to day and think about how many of them now seem to have an AI feature that somehow actually makes them far more useful than they were. AI tools are killing software engineering and we're at the point now where it's becoming harder and harder to deny it because it's not just happening in our industry, it's happening across many industries and many roles. The AI stock boom is happening for a good reason. It's because companies are cutting down on staff while increasing their profits. And the way that's happening is because of efficiencies, because of AI. If a company can take a team of 40 people and cut it down to 10 and still have the same amount of output because you just give those people the tools to be able to complete more faster, then the maths becomes very easy. But at the same time, you go on YouTube and it seems like every other person has some £10,000 a month, £50,000 a month product or idea and they're just absolutely thriving. So in this video I want to cover how you can end up on the right side of this because let's be real, the industry is moving and if you don't catch up with it, you're gonna get left behind. So what's the problem here? Well, it's becoming harder and harder to deny, right? I think to begin with when chat GPC 3.5 came out and it wasn't that reliable and the code it wrote was not even just shoddy but it just gave you an answer that wasn't anywhere near the algorithm that you were looking for or the refactor that you were hoping to see. It couldn't look at a class and be like, ah, oh, here's the common code, here's how you can make this simpler. It would just stumble and miss things out. But that was two and a half maybe three years ago now. And the technology is marching forward. There's alternative tools. I mean, look at the changes that Copilot has made recently. Its context window is massive. It is able to look at the class that you're in and compare it with other classes and infer what you're about to do, not only based on what the rest of the project does, but what you normally do. It's tracking how you code. Yes, it's still not a self-autonomous coder. Devin still hasn't become a thing where you can just let a computer go away and finish a project for you. But what it can do is give you something pretty damn close. And then as a software engineer, you're just fine tuning it to get the outcome that you're after. Well, that's a lot faster than writing something from scratch. And even if what it spits out first time isn't good, you can just natural language explain to it where you would change it and the efficiencies you'd be looking for. And it's gonna get you even closer. And again, that'll be faster than and you trying to do it yourself. And companies are tweaking onto this. They know the tools that we're using. They're seeing the same hype that we're seeing. And the shift that we're seeing is one of moving from, okay, what do we do now that we know that a developer can produce maybe three times as much as they used to be able to? And in a lot of cases, that's, okay, actually, we don't need more throughput, but we could cut corners and save on staffing costs here, which is how you end up with being asked to leave. But who does this affect the most? Well, first of all, you've probably used the AI tools. I don't need to tell you that things like code scaffolding, basic refactoring, a lot of the time, it can get you about 90% of the way there. So who's that affecting? Well, the entry level roles. You've got to think about how software teams are structured so that you've got junior to mid levels producing probably the largest volume of the code that goes into the code base, but then the gate of entry is the code review, which is done hopefully at the senior level. Now, what's happening there? You've basically got a system where if you could replace those mid levels and those, you've almost got something identical to what the prompting circle is, right? It's ChatGPT gives you a code solution and you go, hmm, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Make these changes and it makes it. That's very similar to your juniors and your mid-levels producing code solutions and you just tweaking the little bits that you want by leaving comments and then they get back to you. What's cheaper though? Having a mid-level and a junior or having an AI do that? And depending on the complexity of the company that you're working at, we might already be at the point where actually AI is good enough. If you're working on a simple website, which there's a lot of companies that employ people to work on simple websites that don't really have that much complexity to them, there's a good chance that you're already at risk with OpenAI's current solutions, or whether you're dealing with Anthropic, and I don't think really anyone's talking about Gemini, but my point stands. So I guess it's the first actionable takeaway. With this in mind, that we're moving, like it or not, towards this system where code production is getting shifted onto an AI's shoulders instead of maybe a real person, what skills then would make you valuable? Well, it's the exact skills that a senior would be doing now, which is basic code reviews. So if you want to start preparing for this, I'd recommend spending more time doing code reviews because because fundamentally, this is going to give you that edge of, okay, let's shape the code that's coming out of these models to fit what the client wants. Because we don't know if we're 2, 5, 10, 20 years away from the bulk of code not being written by hand. But that's just maintaining your job. You don't really want to hear about that. What you want to hear about is how people are making shit tons of money from, vi from this. Now, what you got to think is, okay, if the companies are slashing their workforce by like 60, 70%, and still producing the same amount of stuff. What does that tell us? Well, that we should be able to produce things much faster than was possible two, three years ago. And you're seeing this now. Not only are we in a situation where you can build a minimum viable product faster than ever, we're also in a situation where there are more ideas that can be created because AI now allows tools and solutions that were never possible before. Think of all the apps that you use day to day and think about how many of them now seem to have an AI feature that 
somehow actually make them far more useful than they were. But before we talk about that, software engineer mentors cost about $66 for just a 45 minute session. I mean, look at this guy. He costs $81. Most of you guys know how to code anyway and do it day in day out for work. So they probably don't even apply to you. But if you're interested in fast tracking your career and salary, or you want to start building alternative streams of income with the skills you already have, like this guy who makes 96,000 a year, literally just talking to a camera about what he did that day at work, or this guy who's making $83,000 a month from the Sassy launch. I can help you start moving towards that. So I've thrown five sessions on a Saturday that you can book and I'm only charging $50. It's the only time I could spare. So once they're gone, they're gone. If you're interested, link in the description. If you were thinking about making, I don't know, a flashcard app for learning. Well, one of your pet peeves might have been, oh, well, I have to write a bunch of flashcards. Well, not anymore. You could just give it the broad topic and have an AI fill it out for you. And then you look at it and say, well, actually, I don't like that one and that one. And then it just rewrites it for you. And in free inputs, you've got 50 flashcards that are relevant to what you were doing instead of having a user write the 50 flashcards themselves. So all of the existing products out there that have been tried and tested for a long time and haven't been really able to innovate because they're limited by human input, suddenly there's all new options for finding a new way to innovate because you're able to rely on something like GPT-40 Mini, which for reference, I use it on all of my YouTube scripts to generate these summary cards. And it costs me less than a penny to transcribe and create summaries for an 11 minute video. Think about how much I could offer that as a service to people. You know, you, you make a video, you use this service and it automatically puts summary cards on the video for you. You could probably charge a lot more than a penny a video but that's all it's costing to do it. And I think that's why you're seeing this massive <laughs> re-resurgence of SaaS products and apps that are actually useful. It's not even the point that people are just pushing out rubbish things that nobody's gonna use. It's actually, the floodgates are open and all you need to do is find your niche and your area that you can contribute. And I know I use Mark Liu as an example too often, but what I like about him is that he just wrote a template for a website and put a $200 price tag on it. And I mean, that guy's making 80 to 100,000 a month on that. Imagine the value that you could provide with an AI based solution. And imagine how quickly you could produce it, given how AI enables us to develop solutions faster. So how can you cash in on this? Well, step one, the obvious one. If you haven't already got on the hype train and you've been one of these people saying, oh, well, ChatGPT just returns bad code, Copilot just gives you rubbish, you're just changing the whole thing, check again, make sure that you're right about that. Is it that what it's returning to you is just terrible or are you not prompting in a way that actually produces the result that you want? Are you not thinking, hmm, okay, I'm in line code right now and I'm about to fill out this method. Is it quicker for me to write it or is it quicker for me to quickly do a double slash to have a comment write roughly what I'm about to write and then let the AI have a crack at it and then just change one or two variables or logical statements and have what I'm after. And if you're not too sure where to start at all, there are countless tutorials for every language that you could think of where people have already done this. They're showing you on YouTube for free. Okay, you know what? I'm a JavaScript developer. Here's where I'm making the biggest time savings leveraging AI because it's going to be different for everyone. The, the way that somebody writing C Sharp versus Python uses AI is going to be, isn't going to be the same. Once you're feeling more confident and once you feel like you are actually producing things faster, that's going to do two things for you. One, it's going to give you a bit more job security because when they start coming knocking and looking at, okay, who are the most productive members of our team, you're going to be in that pool of the more productive lot. But two, what it's going to do is what we just talked about. It's going to put you in a position where maybe that hour after work or half an hour after work that you have to work on something on the side, that I don't know, maybe with that time, it would have otherwise taken you six months to make something might now only take you two months to do it. So start playing with some ideas. Think about, think about your interests. Think about the things that you do at work. What could you create and leverage AI so that that thing is markedly easier? Because if you can solve your own problems, then you might be able to find other people with that exact same problem and sell to them. You know it's of value because if you're using it, it's got to be a better use of your time than doing the thing yourself. The idea that I told you about earlier of doing the flashcards. A year ago, GPT was good enough to generate flashcards. It's just that the cost of the API call was so high that in order for me to have somebody, you know, regularly using it, it would have cost them... £20 a month. And I was like, oh, is anybody actually going to pay £20 a month for that kind of app? And then since then, in just, I think it was in like four months from when I initially did that calculation, they dropped the price of GPT-40 Mini to a quarter of what it was. So if it was £20, it was now £5 a month to be financially viable. Okay, well, somebody might buy that. Well, two months later, they dropped the price again. And now I think it's like a pound. So even if you come up with an idea now that maybe AI just isn't in a position to do, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't start developing it because maybe by the time that you finish, the prices will come down and it will be viable. And lastly, if you don't have the spare time, think about things in your personal life that could be sped up by leveraging AI. I'll give you a prime example. I used to spend a lot of time thinking about what I was going to eat day to day. I care about my calories and my protein intake. So what I do now is I say, right, me and my partner, we want three days worth of food. I want per meal, 50 grams of protein, 600 calories, which 
you know, that is a third of my daily requirements, give me a shopping list and it will just do it. And then I just go, I, <laughs> I buy those things. I come home. I then say, right, give me the recipe for, uh, give me the recipes for today. And it will just spit them out for me. And then I make that food. And then after that, I was thinking, well, you know, I don't really want to be making three meals a day. How can I do this through meal prep? And it, it just solved that problem for me. So now not only am I not thinking about spending time thinking about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to buy, I'm spending less time cooking because I prep it. And that is all handled by ChatGPT for me. And that's just one example of my personal life that I've automated. Once you start thinking in terms of, okay, how can AI actually meaningfully change, meaningfully reduce the time it takes me to do something, you're going to start seeing things everywhere. So don't wait, get straight to it. Cheers.